now on page seven, uh, talking about the testing. With the Richardson safety trolley, there's no reason to start your testing out with 250 pounds to start with. If for some reason the trolley doesn't make it all the way in, which I recommend that you uh, follow our guide to which pin placement to start with, and then uh, send down uh, test weights in the 30 pound range, that way you can uh, have your spring system there and the trolley can come in a little bit faster if you move it just ahead a little bit or closer to the wheel. Um, then uh, you don't have to absorb all the energy of a 250 pound rider. You'll notice in the videos that we have when we add weight with our Richardson safety trolleys, they actually go slower. And there's other factors that are going to be in there. You might have winds and different things that are playing factors and you need to be aware of that. That's part of your training. Uh, one course that we uh, investigated and they lost a lot of money was uh, a course where they didn't pay attention to the wind. And they were having wind gusts of 60 miles per hour and sustained speeds of 35. And the uh, young lady uh, didn't make it. She passed away on this course. And so, you know, train, train, train and use your rescue training as part of your training. I would, if I was to come out and teach at your course and, and, and work with your staff, I would spend at least four hours on the standards, the ones that you were inspected to, that you're, you know, your third party inspector, and I'd make sure that these individuals knew the standards. If it was me and I was the owner, I'd walk around and ask kids, you know, that had just passed your test, got on your course, whatever, ask them, you know, if they know something, if they do, hand them a twenty dollar bill or something, you know, for, you know, doing due diligence and knowing, you know, some of the most important things are braking and your speed and making sure there's no objects that the, per the patron can run into or the participants. Um, you want to make sure that you are training and testing. Uh, braking failures is number one, um, in my book anyway, and, you know, I've heard from other companies, the insurance companies that say training is number one. Well, it's, it's all related. It's all related. But all the accidents that have been serious enough to where I've been able to take them on have been braking related. And they're at some places that should know better about training. You know, ski resorts and other places like that that should know that training is the most important thing for staff. Um, so train. Brake pad changes, we've covered that, but I do want to reiterate the manual has a uh, image on there uh, you can see the 3D trolley uh, that I drew on uh, SolidWorks and the red uh, section in there is that hole that I was showing you within that bolt circle. You'll wear through the brake pad at some point and that's when you need to make a brake change. You're not going to see the pin because the pin's on the opposite side or uh, yeah, adjacent to it. And so um, you're going to want to uh, just keep an eye on that. You know, every time a person goes down the course, and uh, you got to watch that. You got to pay attention to, um, you know, how much wear you're you're putting through this this brake. I mean, it's good material, and we have other coefficients of friction that can work as well uh, with uh, different applications, steeper applications. Um, one of our applications, we put it on a yeah, 17 inch or a 17 degree slope. And we were, I think, in pin placement two. We changed the brake material and moved this all the way back to uh, about pin placement eight with that brake material because it was a higher coefficient of friction. So once again, uh, you want to train. You want to do uh, your training with all, um, you know, with stuff like this, with the videos, the uh, you know things that will 